Okay, today I'm going to try a, a Dunkeld. A Dunkeld is a Scottish fly. <coughs> it's named after the village of Dunkeld, which is on the River Tay in Scotland. It's very good for salmon, very good for sea trout. In our area, it's used for um, sea trout, and it's as good as any. In smaller sizes, it's very good for brown trout as well. <coughs> It's especially good in a river after a spate, as the river is clear in. Um, so I'm going to tie that today to give you an idea. Now, the fly I've just shown you is uh, a number six, but I'm going to tie it on a number eight hook. Uh, I, I've already waxed the silk, so I go two, three, two, uh, three winds forward towards the eye and then three back to secure the silk. Now I um, there's no need to do touching turns so much with this I'll take it down towards the bend of the hook ready to tie in the tail. Now the tail is the golden pheasant crest feather which is um, a lovely yellow feather it can be a little bit difficult to tie in sometimes because it twists so I tend to put in a bit more than I need and if I have to take some off I've still got some left um, it's a teeny bit long there so I'll draw it through to about there you can use an ordinary cock feather for the tail but it doesn't quite have the the color or the sheen that the golden pheasant crest feather has i've cut that off at an angle um i'm trying to keep the base of the um shank level to uh so we don't have any steps now it's got a gold body with a gold rib. So now I'm going to tie in the gold rib. It's a fine gold rib. Which is here. Again, I'm going to tie it in full length of the body so that I don't need to worry about uh, any steps and I tie it down now I'm taking this right up to the towards the, the eye quite a good length and I'm going to bind it down pretty firm because I want to keep this body fairly even it'll have a little bit of a taper in theory the wrong way but with a wet fly it doesn't matter too much okay now I'm going to put on a gold body and I'm going to use um, a lure flash mylar flat tinsel which is silver one side and gold the other <coughs> so I'll cut this off and tie it in with all tinsels you tie it in wrong side facing you so that when you wind it over when you turn it over to wind it in you got the right side showing okay now before I tie that in I'm going to put some varnish on the shank. Don't need too much of this but it does help to sort of glue it down. And you will have noticed I'm tying this in by the eye at the head of the uh, fly because I'm going to give it a double wind. I'm going to go down and then back up down to the tail and back up. Now this gives a double winding which 
does give the fly body a little bit more sparkle. Not everyone does it, and I wouldn't say it's absolutely essential, but it does give a bit more sparkle and it covers any gaps that you may have missed. And the varnish I put on earlier sort of squeezed out between the joints and it is now helping to stick down the second layer. I get up to there and I secure it just like that. Give one or two winds to get it right and remove the surplus. And now I'm going to rib it and because it's a hard body I can rib the same way. If it was a soft body and I was concerned about the rib tucking down in between the winds, if it was say a, a hurl body or um, a dubbed body, I would wind the opposite way. But with this type of body we don't need to worry. So there's our body, there's our rib on the body. So what we got at this stage is we've got the rib which I've just put on, we've got the tail and we've got the, the body. The next item is the throat hackle or the beard hackle, whatever you like to call it. And you can wind this hackle on. Some people wind it on <coughs> and it's a good way of doing it. I don't do that because when you wind, you've got the stalk at the head, which can give a thick head. So I just take off some of the fibers. And very often it's not too easy to get enough in one go. So I put two feathers together like this. Can you see those two? Get them together and I take off the fibers in one go. I draw them down. I've got the two lots here and off they come. Now I've got enough to put on straight away in one go. And the end of the hackle will be sort of towards the point of the hook, um, which is about there. So I'm now going to do what we call the pinch and loop method, where I draw it up like that. And that's the beard hackle on. Give it one or two winds to secure it. And I will take off the surplus. Just watch when you do that, you don't cut the silk. So that's our hackle on, our body and the rib. The next item is the wing. Now the true tie-in, the original tie-in, will ask for a bronze mallard wing. Um, now the, the, the mallard wing, it's difficult to get these days. And for years now I've been using turkey like this. <coughs> Which, to be honest, I think is just as good. Um... The trend these days is to use a hair wing and I use a hair wing quite a lot. I'm a big fan of hair and you'll need um, a tail like this to take off a bunch of hair to do it sort of like that if you like only right proportions and it, it does a fabulous job and to be honest with you I prefer the hair wing, but I'm trying to show you the traditional way of doing it, if you're a traditionalist, which I am a bit. But I'm going to do it with the turkey wing. And the way you do that, generally with wing slips, you take one from one wing, a slip from one wing, and a slip from the opposing feather on the other wing. So you put them both on and they... they <coughs> compensate in the water but I can assure you a rolled wing uh, which has been taught in our class our fly tying class Ogmo Anglers fly tying class is just as good I've used it and I, I, I can assure you it's just as good and the way you do it you get the amount you think you're going to need which is about there Draw the fibres down near enough to get the tips sort of lined up like that. 
a bit like that and you cut it off you cut off a bit like that and you're left with a sort of sheet of feather like that now to fold this wing I'll try to show you on a piece of paper because it, it is a good technique to get to know assume this is the sheet of feather fiber wing you would fold one part towards the middle the other part towards the middle and then over like that so you've actually got four four layers and if you can see that and that's what I'm going to do with this feather fiber wing here now I normally put it on my knee to do it but I'm going to try to show you how I do it um, which may not work I fold one part in then the other part and now both to the middle and there's the wing that sort of came out a little bit better than I expected it to and the tip of the wing will come towards the end of the tail like that so now I'm going to tie on the wing and I'm going to use the pinch and loop method of tying in which is uh, something that will stand you in good stead if you get to learn to do it and what actually happens is I pinch in the silk between my thumb and forefinger and I pull down and you should see the roots of these feathers come up if I'm doing it correctly which doesn't always work there they've come up so now I'm going to put on a few winds now I try not to wind back onto the wing because that can distort it a bit so that's how it is <coughs> excuse me now that's the wing I'm quite pleased with that because I didn't know if that was going to work for a demonstration now I've got to cut off the waste the surplus roots here and before I do that if I cut them off in one go the wing isn't fully secured yet and sometimes it can disturb the wing so I thin them out a bit with my dubbing needle and I'm going to remove them a bit at a time with my sharp scissors so here we go let's see how this works out one lot two lots just take your time doing this three lots so that's the wing on I'm going to just have a look this side yeah I'm pleased with that that's okay now before I secure it good and proper I just put a touch of varnish on the roots of the wing just like that <clears throat> so that when I wind it now the varnish gets pushed down into the roots and gives us a nice secure wing so there we are now the other item I'll show you on this larger fly are the jungle cock eyes this is a smaller fly so I'm using jungle cock smaller jungle cock eyes okay now the jungle cock it's a cape it's a cape from the jungle fowl <coughs> which is roams the jungles of India and then the neck feathers are this jungle cock as we call a jungle cock cape um, it's quite expensive and it doesn't matter you don't have to use it I know some guys who never use it and they catch just as many fish but the true original tie-in of the Dunkeld it has jungle cock eyes so I'm going to fit them on you tear one off the cape like this strip off the bump from the bottom and you're left with the important part of the feather like that so I'm now going to tie that on just sort of like that that's going okay so far so good 
While it's on, I draw the stalk back and I tie the stalk down to doubly secure it. And now I've got to remove that stalk, little bit of a stalk there, which I will do, just lift it like that, sharp scissors, nip it off. And I'm going to do the, the same my side. Here's the feather, which I've already prepared and stripped off. And I look at where, line them both up for size, so they're both the same size. Tie it on like that, have a look at it. And I'll take this stalk back to doubly secure it. And I nip off this stalk. Okay, that's the jungle cock eyes on. We've got some very skilled tyres in our class who put them on two at the same time. I'm not quite up to that. I'm now going to uh, do the whip finish to finish off the fly. The tail should be up a little bit. Okay, here we go. The way I do the whip finish, you may have seen me do before. I cross over, I secure the silk like that, concentrating on this top one, and I wind it on towards the eye, always towards the front. While it's there, put in my dubbing needle in the loop and I draw it up. <coughs> and that's the dunk held. I will now varnish the head and that should really complete the fly. Always make sure the eye is cleared, ready for tying on your leader. This is a very good fly for sea trout in South Wales area. Just clearing the eye. I think it was already cleared, but that's it. That's the Dunk Eld, and I can recommend it. It's a very good fly. Okay, hope you picked up a few tips there. And uh, I, I thank you for watching.